part of the construction phase of the uh, VLA, they did a very extensive search of 20 or 30 different sites throughout Texas, New Mexico, Southern Colorado, Arizona, probably Nevada, uh, and this was the site that was chosen. Well, there's three reasons. Uh, one is flat. We move these antennas around on transporters, which picks these antennas up and moves them to different pads. Uh, the second reason is it's dry and high, okay, because for maintenance reasons. There's, but there's a third, it is as far south as you can get in the U.S. and still have flat and dry. And the last thing is that we don't, it's not a big city here, because cities produce interference, and interference destroys what we do. So, the, so the, all these antennas work together as a unit. They, they, they sort of replicate what an antenna of the whole span of this uh, array uh, would do. And the reason we do that is that we need resolution. Resolution, the ability to distinguish objects close together on the sky. Sort of the gold standard for resolution is like one arc second. One arc second is about the size of a dime seen at a distance of a mile or two. And that's what we need to get if you're going to be able to do astronomy because the objects that we're looking at or of that size, maybe a little bigger, maybe a little smaller. Uh, in order to do that, uh, you have to build an aperture, which is quite large, because radio wavelengths are very long. And the resolution of any um, uh, focusing uh, camera, I mean, this is a camera, uh, it is depend upon the, its, its size measured in wavelengths. So what you can do an optical with a little pinhole, we need an array which is 20 or 30 miles across, because that's the size of the wavelengths we're dealing with. You can't build a single antenna 40 miles across, and so what we do is have all kinds of little antennas movable uh, so that we can move them around and collect information. The information that we actually use is the pairs of antennas, not individual antennas, it's the pairs. Each pair uh, measures uh, what in technical language is called a Fourier component. And it's not an easy thing to put into uh, simple words, um, but it has to be reconstructed by a computer. And so we have quite large computers needed to reconstruct the image from all of these paired pieces of information. There are 27 antennas that work at one time, and that means 351 pairs. And so 351 pairs are constantly producing data managed by the computer, and then processed in, in computing to make it to make the images. We actually take the two polarizations and we'll split them up. But ultimately, we're driven by curiosity. We want, we want to know what are the physical processes. Why, why does the star look like it does? Why is a gas cloud blowing the way it is? Why, why do black holes exist? Uh, how, do, how are they born? How do they die? Uh, to me, it's the same, same curiosity that drives people to go to the top of mountains. We want to see what's there. We want to understand.